Um, Ms. Foster, please know how much I love and respect you, regardless of what may transpire in the next several minutes. <laughs> the Cecil B. DeMille Award says every bit as much about the presenter as it does the recipient. <laughs> and that's why I'm here for Jody. As I reflected on her formative years, I was surprised and delighted at certain of the similarities. <laughs> Although I didn't speak French fluently or attend an Ivy League university, nor have 50 credits before I was 21, unless you're talking pinball, <laughs> it was exposed during an exhaustive effort by my team of researchers over their Christmas vacation while I was partying on Geffen's boat off Anguilla, <laughs> that she and I, in fact, shared the same four life ambitions. In 1974, during a probing interview with LA Magazine, she stated, and I quote, A, I want to be President of the United States. B, I want to go on stage. C, I want to go to Rome, and D, I want to get a hamster. <laughs> Sadly, my dreams of the presidency were dashed when I caught a felony disrobing at a Commedia dell'arte show at the Vatican. <laughs> I finally got my hamster. His name is Bubbles. <laughs> Mel's got one, too. Her name is Bipsy. We put them together, and tonight we'd like to give you pick of the litter. <laughs> In an exemplary career spanning five decades, she has gone from being one of the youngest people to win an Oscar to one of our most admired directors. She has received 44 awards, including two Golden Globes, two Oscars, three BAFTAs, the American Cinematheque, an Independent Spirit, and one from the National Board of Review. But perhaps her greatest achievement is in her philanthropy, best encapsulated by her donation to the Motion Picture Television Fund in 2011 of the Jodie Foster Aquatic Pavilion. <laughs> now, Jodie, sit back, relax. Feel free to brainstorm on the right thank you gift for me <laughs> as we watch your exceptional life in cinema flash before our eyes. Be the hero of your own life story. D don't throw that line at me. I wrote that line. You ever hear of women's lib? Gonna bat and tag them, drag them down to the floor. Gonna rub them, cut them, sell them back and more. The girls like you. Whole string, what a prize. Hi, right, why don't you give it a little tug? I know you've got to be lucky. Ah! I'm in the game. Could you do it again? I hope not. It's enough! Is resigning and putting me in charge. Get to the house, everyone, before we're in the evening news. Who wants a leg? <laughs> you spend more time putting yourself up than there is time in the day. Listen, honey, if I didn't look this good, you wouldn't give me the time of day. I'm some low class bimbo, right? Will those bastards go to jail? I heard a strange noise. What was it? It was screaming. No, no! Jack! I'm here! He didn't do anything. Let him go. Please. 
Can you get a mouse for me? Ladies and gentlemen, Jody Foster. What do you say? I'm 50. Um, you know, I was going to bring my walker tonight, but it just, it, didn't, it just didn't go with the cleavage. Robert, I want to thank you for everything, for your bat crazed rapid-fire brain, the sweet intro. I love you and Susan, and I am so grateful that you continually talk me off the ledge when I go on and foam at the mouth and say, I'm done with acting, I'm done with acting, I'm really done, I'm done, I'm done. Trust me, 47 years in the film business is a long time. You just ask those Golden Globies, because you crazy kids, you've been around here forever. You know, Phil, you're a nut. Aida, Scott, thank you for honoring me tonight. And it is the most fun party of the year. And tonight, I feel like the prom queen. Thank you. Looking at all those clips, you know, the hairdos and the freaky platform shoes. It's like a home movie nightmare that just won't end. And all of these people sitting here at these table, they're my family of sorts, you know, fathers mostly, uh, executives, producers, the directors, um, my fellow actors out there. We, we've giggled through love scenes. We've punched and cried and spit and vomited and blown snot all over one another. And those are just the co-stars I liked. Um, but you know, more than anyone else, I share my most special memories with the members of the crew. Uh, blood-shaking friendships, brothers and sisters. We made movies together, and you can't get more intimate than that. So while I'm here being all uh, confessional, and uh, I guess I just have a sudden urge to say something that um, I've never really been able to air in public, so uh, declaration that I'm a little nervous about, but maybe not quite as nervous as my publicist right now, huh, Jennifer? Um, but, uh, you know, I'm just going to put it out there, right? Loud and proud, right? So um, I'm going to need your support on this. I am uh, single. <laughs> yes, I am. I am single. No, I'm kidding. But I mean, I'm not really kidding, but I'm kind of kidding. I mean, thank you for the enthusiasm. Did, can I get a wolf whistle or something? <laughs> be a big coming out speech tonight because uh, I already did my coming out about a thousand years ago back in the Stone Age in those, uh, those very quaint days when a fragile young girl would open up to trusted friends and family, co-workers, and then gradually, proudly to everyone who knew her, to everyone she actually met. But now, apparently, I'm told that every celebrity is expected to honor the details of their private life with a press conference of fragrance and a primetime reality show. <laughs> And, I, you know, you guys might be surprised, but I am not Honey Boo Boo Child. No, I'm sorry, that's just not me. It never was, and it never will be. But please don't cry, because my reality show would be so boring. I, I would have to make out with Malion Cotillard, or I'd have to spank Daniel Craig's bottom, you know, just to stay on the air. It's, you know, not bad work, you can get it, though. Um, but seriously, if you had been a public figure from the time that you were a toddler, if you'd had to fight for a life that felt real and honest and normal against all odds, then maybe then you too might value privacy above all else. Privacy. Someday, in the future, people will look back and remember how beautiful it once was. I have given everything up there from the time that I was three years old. That's reality show enough, don't you think? Um, there, there are a few secrets to keeping your psyche intact over such a long career. The first, love people and stay beside them. That table over there, 222, way out in Idaho, Paris, Stockholm. That one next to the bathroom with all the unfamous faces, the very same faces for all these years. My acting agent, Joe Finicello. Joe, do you believe it? What, 38 years we've been working together? even though he doesn't count the first eight. Matt Saver, Pat Kingsley, Jennifer Allen, Grant Nyman, and his uncle Jerry Borak. May he rest in peace. Lifers, my family of friends here tonight and at home, and of course, Mel Gibson, 
you know you saved me too. There is no way I could ever stand here without acknowledging one of the deepest loves of my life, my heroic co-parent, my ex-partner in love, but righteous soul sister in life, my confessor, ski buddy, conciliary, most beloved BFF of 20 years, Sydney Bernard. Thank you, Sid. I, I am so proud of our modern family, our amazing sons, Charlie and Kit, who are my reason to breathe and to evolve my blood and soul. And boys, in case you didn't know it, this song, like all of this, this song is for you. This brings me to the greatest influence of my life, my amazing mother, Evelyn. Mom, I know you're inside those blue eyes somewhere and that there are so many things that you won't understand tonight, but this is the only important one to take in. I love you, I love you, I love you. And I hope that if I say this three times, it will magically and perfectly enter into your soul, fill you with grace and the joy of knowing that you did good in this life. You're a great mom. Please take that with you when you're finally okay to go. You see, Charlie and Kit, sometimes mom, your mom loses it too. And I can't help but get moony, you know? This feels like the end of one era and the beginning of something else. Scary and exciting. And now what? Well, I may never be up on the stage again, on any stage for that matter. Change, you gotta love it. I will continue to tell stories, to move people by being moved, the greatest job in the world. It's just that from now on, I may be holding a different talking stick and maybe it won't be as sparkly. Maybe it won't open on 3,000 screens. Maybe it will be so quiet and delicate that only dogs can hear it whistle. But it will be my writing on the wall. Jodie Foster was here, I still am. And I want to be seen, to be understood deeply, and to be not so very lonely. Thank you, all of you, for the company. Here's to the next 50 years. <laughs>